We can visualize the frequency information with two ways depending upon the levels of measurement. A bar graph can be used as a graphical representation of frequency for categorical uh, variable, meaning nominal or ordinal level of data. As an example, let's say in the previous uh, visual acuity data, 10 of them were male and remaining 12 were female. As gender is a nominal variable, a bar graph is a proper visualization to show the frequency of each category. So to draw a bar graph, you need to draw the axis first. So um, we need to draw axis and um, categories of the nominal variable goes to one axis. So it doesn't, uh, it doesn't really matter uh, if it goes to horizontal axis or the vertical axis. But in this case, um, we're going to use the vertical axis. So we have uh, male and female on the vertical axis as a categorical uh, values. And then frequency information for each category goes on the other axis. So we're going to use horizontal axis to show comparisons among discrete categories. So here, so that those are tick marks. And you just uh, draw the uh, bar uh, of which height is the same as the frequency of each category. So bar graph can be useful to point out the order and the relative importance between different categories when there are many categories under a variable. In addition, bar graph can be used for more complex representation of data um, by grouping or stacking when the variable is nested with subcategories. Another way to visualize the frequency information for continuous data, such as interval or ratio level of a measurement, is to use histogram. So what we see here is a histogram of 80 observations of intraocular pressure. So it is typical that measurement values go to the x-axis, which is horizontal, and frequency of the measurement values go to the y-axis. So with a large enough data, a histogram can show the overall shape of the frequency distribution of the data. Uh, please note that the uh, bars are drawn to touch each other in histogram, whereas bars in bar graph are not. So I invite you to think about the reason why that may be the case. It is a bit complicated to draw a histogram manually. And it is not necessary to do so when you have a program to automatically generate one for you. But to understand how it is drawn will help us understand how to read the graph better. So as a first step, you need to determine how many intervals or groups you want to divide the data by. So it is not easy to decide as there is really no right or wrong answer on this. However, if you have too many or too few of them, then you won't be able to see the underlying distribution of the data properly, and in turn, it will make the interpretation of the data a bit more difficult. So there's an equation um, to actually help you decide what's going to be the optimal number of um, intervals or groups. Um, but you know this equation is not really a holy grail to decide at uh, the number of bins. So that is really there to give you some sort of guiding number to start with. So let's use the second equation because it looks simpler and to see what we get. So the n here is basically the, um, the number of data right? we have. And if you still remember, we had 22, n equals 22, right? So um, the, oops, square root of 22, so basically the number of bins. So by the way, the binning, so th this first step is called binning, uh, where you want to determine how many bins, how many intervals, how many groups or classes you want to divide the data range by using uh, one of these equations. So we are using the uh, so number of intervals is just square root of 22. So that is. 
if you use your calculator, it should be 4.69 uh, up to two decimal points. So now you want to round this to the nearest integer, which will become 5. Right, so using this equation, um, the suggested, the recommended number of bins we're going to use is 5. So now you need to decide the size or width of each bin. So to calculate the width of a bin, we first need to calculate the range of the data. To do so, we need to find out minimum and maximum values from the data set. And to do that, it'll be easier if we sort the data, right? And then, which we already did. So here is our sorted data um, previously. And from this, it, it is easy to identify minimum and maximum value. So the minimum is 0.2. And that is, so that is mean max. Right. So to calculate the range, so the range becomes that. range basically range of the data is max minus in and our max was 0.44, minimum was 0.2, so the range is 0 0.42. So this is our range, 0.42. Now to determine the width of a bin, then we can use the equation here. So the width is, Round so that's round range we just calculated, which is or two, and we also determined our number of bins, right, which was five, right, so that is round. Um, four. So if you round it to the nearest decimal point, that becomes point one, right? So the size of our bin will be point one. Now we need to determine the range of the first interval. Uh, as our mean was 0.02, right? The minimum data was 0.02. So the lower limit of the first interval should be less than the minimum of 0.02 so that the minimum can be included in the first interval. So our first interval will start from log mar of zero, right? Inclusive of 0.0. And then up to 0.1. So that was our size of the bin, right? Or the width of a bin. 0.1, right? So um, because this in width of the bin was 0.1, the upper limit of the um, this first interval should be uh, 0.1 exclusive of. And likewise, the upper limit of the last interval should be also larger than the maximum value in the data set so that the interval can encompass the value, uh, which was 0.44. So once you have the, uh, the interval determined, then you can just account, literally count, you know, how many observations you have in that interval. And it was two before. And you can just keep doing this until the last interval. So now you add the next move to the next interval. So now the next interval start from where we left off, right? The point one. And then you again add the width 
of uh, a bin, which is 0.1, and then uh, the second interval ranges from 0.1 to 0.2, and then you count the number of, or the occurrences, frequency of observations um, included in that interval, and then you just keep going, 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 until you hit the last interval. Because the number of bins we needed was 5, so we can stop here. Likewise, the upper limit of the last interval should be also larger than the maximum value in the data set, as I said, so that the interval uh, can encompass the value, the maximum value. And our max was 0.44, so the upper limit of the last interval, 0.5, is fitting. Okay, now we can draw a bar with the height proportional to the count for each interval and the width equal to the bin size. So on the left here, um, so we have a visual QT in log mar on the x axis and we have frequency on the vertical axis. So for the first interval, we can draw a bar so, and look at the, uh, the color of the numbers that'll match. The color of each bar, right? So the first one is this black bar, right? And the height of this bar is actually the same as the absolute frequency of the first interval. And then you add another bar that uh, that is abutting uh, the previous bar until the last bin. So the next one is a red one. See, the height of the second one is the same as the absolute frequency of the second interval. And you do this until the last bin, then we have just completed the uh, histogram right, for the uh, visual acuity data we had before. Now we can draw a cumulative frequency distribution histogram, um, but it is basically the same thing because we all know uh, the bin size, bin width. So all we have to do is to draw a bar. Um, so we have a um, you know blank um, axis, and we you know have basically the same x-axis, which is a visual QT in log mar, um, because of the space uh, it is not shown here. But when you draw a graph, you have to include uh, the proper label axis, uh, a pro proper axis label, right? And we have cumulative frequency on the y-axis. So the first one is same as the you know, first interval's cumulative frequency, which is 2 black, right? Um, and then we can just uh, put the, um, the bars on top of each other. Um, so adding the previous bin to the current bin. So the second interval, we add 6 on top of 2, right? And then the next one is 17, 20, and 22. So this is how we construct a histogram in uh, the regular histogram on the left and the cumulative uh, frequency histogram on the right.